Hi, my name is Kate Condon and I am continuing my vlogging process for my work experience at Tosca. Um, this time I'm going to be talking about the first um, time the orchestra has met with the singers and how that kind of changed the dynamic of the show. Um, I also had a theatre tour and I got to sit down with Colette and Fanny who are assistant stage director and assistant stage manager um, and that was really exciting. So it's going to be a long one today and yeah, I just got a lot to say. So before the experience even started, I had a really cool experience. Um, I got there a bit early, which meant I kind of got to poke around the board office area where we've been sitting to start each um, session. Um, but they keep all the old school scores there, and I've seen a lot of score sheet music in my time. I'm in band and choir, so I'm, I'm aware and I know how to read it. Um, but I had never seen opera one, so I was really excited. There were these beautiful books. There's rows and rows and rows. There was like Shakespearean plays turned into operas. There was Magic Flute. There was the Pirates of Penzas. Um, I even found a score for tea, which was really cool because I saw that, so it was kind of cool to see the music. Um, but it was really cool to see how composers notate operas because I think it's quite different than other things. Um, something that struck me was there was the original text above in a line, so following along as it should, and underneath was the English. And as I learned, some theatre companies actually only do stuff in English, so it's interesting because personally I was a bit confused on like, do the, mus or do the singers always know what they're singing about or do they kind of have the gist of it but they actually know exactly word for word which they're singing, which I think it makes their performances stronger because personally I feel a lot more connected if I'm saying exactly that I'm in love as opposed to, I think I'm in love, um, which was really cool. Um, then we got on of our tour of the space. Um, first we went into the wardrobes room and that was so cool. Cool. It was wall to wall of like petticoats and skirts and suit jackets and shirts and hats and fabric and jewelry and it was just incredible because I get lost in that sort of thing and I think costumes really bring a production to life. So seeing so many old costumes that have been on stage that have been well looked at, well looked after and cared for was just really really cool and I don't know I kind of nerd out over those sort of things so I was really excited about that. Um, next we tried to get into the prop workout, uh, war workshop sorry. Um, unfortunately it was closed and that would have been really really cool to see but I think this experience is cool enough so I think I'll survive. Um, then we went upstairs to kind of see the administration side of things and it was a lot bigger than I expected. Um, Personally, I love the decor. I think it's so cool and so contemporary. Um, an interesting thing about it is there are very few offices with doors. So even higher up people in the company sit in little cubicles that are very connected to everyone else. So it makes the workplace very flowing and collaborative as opposed to everyone shut away in their office, which I think is really cool. Um, another thing that I thought was really interesting was they let out certain areas of their offices to smaller theater companies that kind of need a help and a step because they don't have a lot of money, which I thought was really cool because, as I've mentioned, I um, do a lot with small community theater and it's a really big part of my life, so when I see that they're supporting smaller theater organizations, I think that it's really, really cool. So now I'm going to talk about the general notes for the um, orchestra. Um, it started right away and it was loud. They knew exactly what they were doing. The technique that they are using is absolutely phenomenal. I was sitting very close to the violins and they were all playing in such a way that they were so in sync and the music was stunning. It brought it to life. The singers are amazing and they do such a good job of conveying it in their voices, but when you hear the motifs and the melodies and the counter melodies and they're all going at once and the singers it's so big and it's so grand and it's really exciting because you get that feeling that you're watching something really important and something that a room of 200 plus people are focusing on and striving towards a goal all together which was really cool um Something that was nice is I got to see the musical director in a larger role than I had before. Um, obviously, um, he was conducting, and it was quite a big um, ordeal. There were singers, musicians, all sorts of us. There was donors sitting at the side because they wanted to see what was going on, if they were paying all this money. Um, the musicians are extremely talented at what they do, obviously. They make a living this way. But they were following and writing down every note perfectly, and... Yeah, there were some times where they would play a wrong note or make mistakes, but they're human, and it was cool to see that as well. But for the most part, 
absolutely incredible. Something that I thought that was kind of cool, um, the conductor focuses on the, the instruments and the people that play them. They don't often conduct solely to the singers. They almost always have their back to the singers. So the singers need to be in time with the music and know that music inside out. However, when it's just the singers singing, the conductor will wait for them and watch and make sure that they're holding the notes they want and like shaping the system that way. And then he'll move in with the rest of the orchestra, which is really cool because he's not so rigid in his ways that he must do it like this. It leaves a lot of room for the artist to kind of put their stamp on it, which I thought was really, really cool. Um, yeah, personally, I'm a big band geek, um, so I thought it was really cool to see all the different instruments. Like, there was a harp. I don't see harps that often. There were, like, valve trombones. No saxophones, unfortunately, because that's what I play, but, um, I thought it was really, really cool, and I really thought that the orchestra added a second part that was kind of missing, and I really thought it was cool. Personally, my emotions for Tosca were very, very bipolar during this um, first kind of read-through with the orchestra. It was so... it would go from happy with the priest and the kids, and personally that's my favorite part, and the music is just so gorgeous. And then when Tosca's crying and, like, being abused by Scarpia, it's really heartbreaking, and personally I was finding myself getting really into it. And because I'm now more um, familiar with the characters and the um, storyline, the orchestra gave me that much more push. And the way that they shape it, they put so much emotion into it. And it's like sitting in the orchestra pit at a real show. So I thought it really changed my perspective because before I was like, this is really pretty. But now I'm like, oh my god, Tosca, like what she's doing, what they're doing to you isn't fair. It just, it made me connect on a level that I actually didn't think I would, um, which I thought was really cool. This is my first experience really analyzing an opera, and I'm really enjoying it more than I originally thought I would, um, which is a really, really cool experience. Personally, for me as a musician and a performer at a such a small level, what they're doing is the dream, and them playing, like the, the singers singing for an orchestra of 200 and knowing that they're backing you up that is a feeling that I can't even explain. I would give anything for that, and I think that the people that are doing this for a living, I wonder if they just think how lucky they are and how talented they are, because I can't even imagine standing there, singing, doing what I love in front of people that want me to succeed and they're helping me to succeed and I'm helping succeed. It's just an amazing experience and... Uh, almost speechless is definitely an emotion. It's just so cool, and I'm really excited to see how that is translated in the bigger theater, which we're moving into on, um, on Monday. So the last thing I'm going to talk about today were my interviews with Fanny and Colette. Um, I was really, really excited to have this opportunity because personally, being as passionate I am about this industry, they are a hundred times fold, and they love talking about what they do. And it's really cool to see a person's eyes light up when they're telling us about their um, experience and what they hope to um, do with this career. And that's exactly what I got from Fanny and Colette. Um, and they're so young and early in their careers, and yet they've done so much and have so many plans. So I was really inspired, actually, by talking to them. And I would really like to thank them for giving us that opportunity because it was extremely special and they are extremely talented individuals who go very far in this business. And it was just really, really exciting to see. Um, so first, Fanny is the assistant stage director. And she sat down to us first and kind of talked to us about what she does, which right now is more helping the stage director. Um, but she said she was really lucky because he likes to bounce ideas off of her and give her her own scenes, and a lot of directors don't do that. So it's another way that Vancouver Opera is super cool and um, very forward-thinking because they want to include as many thoughts and ideas in their final project as possible, um, which you don't really see in other things. She told us about how she'd gone to school all over the world and how language had really helped her because French is her first language and then English and then German and she reads Italian, which is mind-blowing. Um, she told us about some really cool schools out east and personally I am considering that option, so I was really appreciative of that. And the way she was just so passionate about talking and everything, it really was really, 
just so exciting to hear because she was so nice and extremely passionate and I think that she'll do really cool things in the years to come. Then Colette came and brought the big stage manager book. Oh my gosh. I think I'm an organized person and that takes organization to a whole nother level. It has the script on this side or the score um, on this side of what's going on um, highlighted. Half of it is stage left, half of it is stage right, and the entrances and exits of props, characters, anything else important. Oh my god, it was amazing. The middle was saved for more other notes that are important to know, but not necessarily stage right or stage left. Um, on the other side of the page, which I thought was really cool, was a drawing of the stage along with where each character is. Pages can sometimes be as short as six seconds because they're going so fast, so characters move obviously, but it was really cool to know they can tell a character, hey, on page 12, bar 80, you are standing exactly here for this part. Um, they are just hyper-organized, and I think that that really helps the actors and helps the stage directors and helps the music directors um, because they can uh, they can lean on them so much, and it was just so cool. Another thing I thought was interesting, how they have time markings on, so they can kind of judge how long the opera's going to be because, obviously, um, it's important to judge that ahead of time because all of the actors, and, or the singers, sorry, and the musicians are being paid a certain amount of hours, and if you go over time, you have to pay a lot more, so it's a part of the stage manager's job is to make sure that they don't go over, which I thought was really important. Um, Colette is another one who's very young, um, which is kind of funny coming from us, um, but she looks like she has a great career ahead of her, and she's very organized, and again, I would like to thank them both for the opportunity to talk with me. In conclusion, I am continually inspired by this process. I never really thought about the specific little jobs in opera that are so important and very permanent that I could do post-secondary, and the more I do this, the more I get really excited for the future, which is usually really scary to think about as a grade 11 student. Um, I am really excited for this next coming week. I am at the opera Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and then the final dress rehearsal Thursday. Um, and maybe even a little thing extra if I talk to a stage manager about maybe getting on headset for one of the shows. Um, it's going to be a really crazy week. I'm going to be really tired, um, but it's going to be so worth it. It's going to be so exciting to see the hours. I'm excited to see the Queenie Theatre again because I haven't been there in a while. And I'm just really, really excited. And again, I am so appreciative for this opportunity. I don't think I'm ever going to stop saying that. Um, and yeah, I'm excited for what this week unfolds and I hope that these vlogs have been interesting and have shown how excited and passionate and how much I love to talk about opera. Thanks.